In this video, we're going to first talk about what setter functions are briefly before we discuss when you should use one. Here's a problem that you can solve with setter functions. I have a ship that moves smoothly and I want to draw on the screen how the speed and direction of the ship is changing each frame, which is represented by these three vectors. And the way I want to do that code-wise is to have this vector variable for each of the three vectors. And when I change the variable, I want the drawing to update. In other words, when changing the variable, I want to run other code instructions. This is what a setter function does. Code-wise, it works like this. You can ignore most of the script. We're going to focus just on these few lines I highlighted. I have a variable called vector. Uh, it holds a vector to value representing what I want to draw. And then I use the set get keyword followed by a function name. This tells Godot, when we change the value of the vector variable, please call this function. This is what set get set vector does. Then you have to define the function. So I've created a function called set vector. It takes one argument. It's the, uh, you could call it the new vector value, right? And this argument is the new value you're going to assign to the variable. So the first thing a setter function must do is assign the new value to the variable. Because when you create a setter function, you replace the default mechanism for updating variables. And then after that, you can run any code you want. So you could say print new vector value, for example. Um, and in this demo, I've added some code so that when I press a button, it's going to call the set vector function and assign it a new uh, vector. So I'm going to run that uh, and press space a couple of times. You can see that it generates new vectors. And if I go to my output in Godot, you can see that each time it printed the vector's uh, value on top of updating the drawing. So every time I called the set vector function or modified the vector variable, it called these three lines of code. Now we can answer the question, when should I use a setter function? And the short answer is whenever you need to run some code upon changing a variable. For example, I have a game grid here. And when I change the board width um, or the board's height, I want to update the drawing. It's a very common use case for setter functions. If I go to the script tab, you can see that I have my two exported variables, board width and board height, and I have them attached to two setter functions. The first one is going to update the grid size. It's going to update the calculation for the size of the grid in pixels, and then call the update function to redraw the grid. I have the co code for drawing uh, right here. And same thing for the board height. Here's another very common use case. In this project, I have a list of demos and these are UI widgets. I want to expose just two variables, the demo name and icon to update the widget. Um, and I don't want to have to deal with getting the texture rec node to display the icon or the label. I want to kind of encapsulate that. So the way I do this is I create my two variables and let's take the demo name as an example. I map it to a setter function by using set get. And then that function first assigns the new string value I get to the demo name variable. And then, uh, well, we wait for the node to be ready in case it's not been added to the scene tree yet. And then we can access the label node and modify its text. So this is a very common pattern in user interfaces. Here's a third more advanced example. We have a character skin that we want to reuse in different scenes with different uh, character controller code. And we want to control the character's animation depending on how the player is moving. The way we do that is by exposing a bunch of variables with setter functions in our script. So 
teammates only have to deal with these variables, changing the velocity, the ground speed, uh, it's telling if the character is on ledge, etc. And internally, the setter functions will take care of picking the right animation depending on the context. This is a more advanced pattern, but this shows you the potential of setter functions. If there's only one thing you should take away from this video, it's that setter functions, you should use them whenever you want to run some code upon changing the value of a variable. On this channel, we answer your questions about Godot and game development in five minutes. Be sure to subscribe for more. And if you want more curated videos about Godot, check out our main channel, GDQuest. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.